just called for a power up. That means she's she running scared. A, what? Are you good? She's you running good? scared. She's Are running scared. Good? Sorry for interrupting you. Sorry for interrupting. I want to have you interrupt me afterwards. It's not going to work if we fight now. This always happens. What's up, guys? Welcome to Hot Take, the show where we have smart people argue about really absurd things. Every week, we give our defendant a fresh hot take that they have to defend against our prosecution. It's just by throwing axes. Has anybody done that? Correct. Order in the court, please. <laughs> Both teams compete for amazing prizes, and there are a few curveballs along the way. The defendant has a whole week to prepare their argument while our prosecution comes in completely blind. Can our defendant maintain their questionable hot take, or will our prosecution poke holes in their defense? Well, I, I just don't like when people lie to me and like they, whoa, they make whoa. things up. Let's find out on Hot Take. What's up, guys? Welcome to Hot Take. This is the show where very smart people argue about very dumb things. Uh, every episode, we have our defendant who's going to argue for something that the prosecution has no preparation for. So we're all going to learn about it at the same time. Uh, I'm Michael Burns, and today I am joined by Riley Anspaugh, Greg Edwards, and Tommy Cook. Hey, Mike. Hey, Tommy. How are you? You know, I'm doing okay. How are you doing? Good. One of the things that makes the show so special is we are not just arguing for ride or to be the smartest little kid on the playground. We're getting prizes, and today we have a very special one. So they gave us a small budget for the show. Um, I had a little bit that I was told was for wardrobe, but what I did is I got on a freighter flight to the Ukraine. Now, once I got there, I started asking about this historic artifact I've heard of for years, a painting that my mother grew up telling me stories about when I lay in my bed. It's real, and it's here. And today, one of you or just one you is going to walk away with this, okay? Um, now they're trying to get this, but you know who's trying to keep it? You know who really wants it? Today's defendant, Helen Flourish. Would you consider yourself an aficionado of art? I, I think so, yeah. Well, then the stakes are high tonight. Well, let's get started. Helen, as our defendant, what are you gonna be trying to convince our lovely, intelligent, and great smelling prosecution of tonight? Today, I will be defending that horses are the worst. Oh, okay. We are, we're going straight forward tonight. Uh, once again, Helen will be trying to convince the prosecution that horses, horses are the worst animals. All of our defendants are gonna get two questions. We also have two things called power-ups. We'll get to those later. But let's get started. Helen, you said that horses are the worst animal. Uh, how are they worse than violent, uh, malicious, evil creatures like bears, tigers, lions that can eat you? Uh, please uh, elaborate. Yeah, this is a really good question. Um, I've been watching a lot of nature shows recently and people are never afraid of horses. It's bears, uh, pumas, things like that. So how this works now, Helen, you have 60 seconds to respond to Tommy's question. You know go. what? I'm gonna go ahead and nip this one in the bud. Let's power up, please. Give me my power up. Okay, uh, this has never happened so soon. She has called for a power up. That means she's running scared. What? Are you good? She's you good? running scared. She's running good? scared. Good? Sorry for interrupting you, Michael. Sorry for interrupting. I want to have no, no, dinner no, 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 with you no, no, afterwards. No. It's not going to work if we fight now. Sorry. This always happens. Let's begin by establishing what constitutes a good animal. A good animal provides one of two things. They provide functionality or they provide companionship. Now, first I would like to argue that horses in this day and age, have no functionality whatsoever. Back to the poor design. Horses have very large bodies on spindly legs, and that causes them to total really easily if we're comparing them to a car. If that thing breaks its leg, guess what you gotta do? You gotta shoot that shit, all right? Now, Jesus horses, Christ. in addition, are an impractical source of food. Because I'm sure you're thinking, well, at least you can eat it, right? You can. I will go ahead and give that to you. Horses are a nutritional food source. They provide a lot of iron. They have fewer calories per pound than cow meat. But they are not designed for commercial operations because they are highly neurotic and too flighty for uh, to be put in a pen together. And if you're thinking, well, I really want to do the, you know, kind of farm to table thing and have my own horse that I slaughter, Listen, you get 640 pounds of meat out of a horse, they take up far too much freezer space, you don't wanna do that. They are also bad companions. 
They are high maintenance. They require their own separate vehicles for flying and for road trips. They have giant toenails that require shoes of all things. And when I talk about giant toenails, let's establish that a hoof is a toenail, my friends. Horses poop 37 pounds of crap a day, all right? Look at that toddler. Does he look like horse poop to you? No, but horse poops weigh that much as that toddler. Finally, listen, horses have bad attitudes. They are rude. Have you ever seen a horse chew at the dinner table? It's disgusting, all right? Just, that's it. It's nasty. Again, horses are bad animals, you guys. They're the worst. Okay, a great job on that, Helen. So now, let's keep going. We had our power fuse right off the bat. You've only used one of your questions thus far, so we got a lot of work to do. Um, not we, you have a lot of work to do. I'm impartial. Let's get it. Greg, you have a question? Uh, I mean, your argument, uh, I mean, we've needed horses since the beginning of time for travel. Uh, now people use horses for horse therapy, uh, gambling, uh, you know, for horse tracks. Uh, I just wonder what would we use what would we use in place for horses if the whole system fell down and we don't have electricity or gas anymore what would we use for travel then you know horses are the worst animal but there is a place for horses in say vr we don't need real life horses to replace horses in and therapy you know we can do that in virtual reality now i'm just saying this we don't need horse real life horses for therapy I didn't realize VR technology had advanced so, so vastly. Okay. Well, okay. you'd be surprised, all right? And that it's still a horse <laughs> in okay. the VR world. Okay, okay, we're just losing <laughs> control. Great, so VR, VR, VR horses, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> VR horses. Um, what else do we got? I got a question. Oh, um, go ahead, Riley. So, yes, you know, you did a wonderful job with your PowerPoint. Horses, you, there's a lot of examples of horses being bad, but you are making the argument that horses are the worst. If they are the worst, why hasn't that reputation accompanied them up until this point? Well, no, Riley, thank you for that question. It is a good question. Horse people still exist. Obviously, there is a lot of love for horses still in this world. Um, I think it's the people just really haven't grasped yet that horses are as detrimental to society as they are, right? They take up a lot of resources. Again, they are expensive creatures to, to, to own as either pets or for the functionality, which again, you know, anything a horse can do, a machine can do better, you know? You can buy a car for the cost of owning a horse for an entire year. Horses cost at least $3,600 for you to own for a whole year. You can buy a car for $3,600, all right? And I think that, you know, horses are, we just as a society haven't come to terms yet with those things that we hold so dear and in such a lauded position in our myths and our legends that they're really not as great as they're made out to be. I want to use our power up right now. Whoa! Okay, uh, we already saw what happens when our defendant uses power up. When the prosecution uses a power up, it always tends to be t Tommy that does this to people. Um, <laughs> the defendant has to speak for two solid minutes on whatever Tommy asks them to speak on. You mentioned that horses take up a lot of resources. I'm wondering how are horses uh, environmentally harmful? Uh, please tell me. Well, the answer to that is actually methane. So methane gas is one of the most potent greenhouse gases. And what is the largest contributor to methane emissions? It's livestock, which include cows, llamas, goats, and also horses. All right. So horses spew, um, it's difficult to say exactly how much methane gas is spewed by horses, but it's a lot. We can know that much just by, again, the virtue of the fact that they have hoops that are 37 pounds a day, all right? There's probably a lot of methane gas coming out of that butt, too. I'm just gonna go ahead and guess, all right? In addition, horses require a lot of water, they require a lot of feed, and they require a lot of land. The minimum required acreage, or sorry, recommended acreage for a horse is, or sorry, the minimum amount of space recommended for a horse is somewhere around 4,800 square feet. That's, that is four times as large as my apartment, most likely. Probably more, unfortunately. Um, and then with that being said, you know, you'd multiply that over you know, thousands of horses. That's taking a lot of land, all right? In addition, I would say that Horses require so much grass and so much feed that it could probably sustain a family of four for a year, two years even, you know, just for a few horses. It's a ridiculous amount of resources that horses are gobbling up. And for what? 
what do they offer us? But that's not the question you asked. The question you asked was about the environmental impact. We gotta go back to methane emissions, we go back to the fact that horses gobble up resources nonstop, and we go back to the fact that they aren't really, they aren't really functional. And actually, let me, let me, you know what, let me add to that. If horses were removing carbon from the air somehow, or if they were providing, say, you know, a source of, of um, if they were providing some source of food or something that could be used to uh, lessen the impact of You made it, change. you made it. That was, that was probably a good job. Um, yeah. I don't know how convinced our prosecution looks. I think you have two questions left. Um, I trust you all. I think you're honest people. What about culture? You know, like you're, if you're taking away horses, you're taking away cowboys. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you suggest they use instead of horses? I mean, cowboys are a dying breed, but that's not the question you asked. You asked what horses, what cowboys could use instead. And I would argue that there are plenty of horse substitutes out there, all right? There are ponies, which do not count as horses. There are llamas. There are other types of livestock, such as goats. Um, I would say that, you know, if a cowboy really wants to do his cowboy thing, there are plenty of sheep that he can herd. <laughs> so how do you think you're doing in convincing them, not me, that horses are the worst animal out of all the animals. I mean, I gotta be honest, I feel like I might have upset the horse gods, you know? I feel like I'm, I'm struggling a little bit up here, I'm sweating, you uh -huh. know? It's, uh, it's a hot room. Yeah, and listen, I've had a lot of horses over my life, and I feel like they're looking down on me, or You've up at me, depending on where horses? they are. Well, I mean, owned them. I feel like that's wrong too, I don't know. How many horses have you owned? Oh, uh, probably six. We've gone through six horses. You've yeah. gone through them? Well, they do die sometimes. Horses do die. Have you ever so. killed one? No. Prosecution, how are we feeling? This one's been a bit of a mixed bag. You know, it's, it's hard to say right now, Michael. It really is. I mean, she's made some great points. Um, I feel like we've also raised some good questions. So I feel like, you know, even sitting from my position, it, I think it all kind of land, it, everything rides on um, a horse and also the last statement from, from the defendant that we're about to hear. Yeah, um, can I ask you, have you, have you had experience with horses in your life, Riley? I have, I mean, I've, I've, I mean, they're, I mean, they're like, they really are big puppies, and I've always said that. They're just big old dogs. And um, I feel like in that way, I, I, you know, you're bringing up points that I've, I've never even considered. Horses are the worst. That's never a, a sentence I thought I would say, Michael. It really isn't. Yeah. Greg, what's your, if you have experience with horses in your life? Yeah, totally. Um, I just can't believe after having six horses, you could betray these gentle creatures like that. So just remember, Helen, you gotta be ready for this. You guys are ready for the final, final question to ask. Okay, the floor is yours. Remember when Steve Irwin died? And that's not the question. That's just kind of the preamble. Um, the question wasn't, remember when Steve Irwin died? Remember how Steve Irwin died and we were all like, oh, stingrays are the worst. They're the worst. And that reputation, because they're so lethal. Speaking of vicious, killing, murderous creatures, what's the death rate like of like people to horses? How many people do horses kill a year compared to, say, a vicious animal like a shark, a stingray, a grizzly? Yeah, let me think about that for a second and just do a little bit of horse math here. Okay, can we pause the clock? I want to let her do horse math. That well. Is... No, no, you do, yeah, do the math. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> I haven't done horse math since like 11th grade. It's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard, okay? This is a difficult statistic. Um, no, let's, let's go ahead, okay, actually. Okay, can we queue up the, the clock again? She's done the horse math now. I would say that the number of horse, uh, humans that are killed by horses per year is underestimated because the number of injuries that are caused by horses per year that devastate people's lives are much higher. To answer your question specifically, I would venture to say that it is probably more than grizzly bears because people have horses more, or just interact with horses more frequently than they do grizzly bears. And because again, there are many ways that a horse can kill a human. It can trample them, it can kick them, it can land on them accidentally. It can just, you know, run and you're in its way. Many ways that people can be killed by horses. Um, I don't have an exact figure for you, so I'm gonna ballpark it. I would say it's probably around yeah, 700 people a year. That seems right. Yeah. And just, this is the part where in editing, the, we'll put the number on the screen <laughs> of how many horses <laughs> die per year, and then we'll get to see how, how you did.
God, I, I don't know where to begin right now. Um, I, I got to watch someone today get vulnerable and take a risk. And I think if there's things we all need to do as people, um, and I don't know, you know, whether we're spiritual, whether we're not, risk and vulnerability are a way that we reflect the essence of the universe through our human actions. And today I saw that in Helen, someone who grew up with horses, rode horses, killed horses, knew horses, and was able to come here and say, this is my story, this is my song, and I'm gonna risk it all to try to convince you that this beloved animal is the worst, not a worst, the worst animal. And I found that compelling, and I found it brave. Now at the same time, I listened to three human beings, one of whom I don't have any way to contact, two who are relatively friendly and I feel comfortable around. And I saw them ask questions that came from a good place, but I saw them ask questions that prioritize the memories people have with horses, the way they've, they've affected people's lives. And I'm, I felt very split and I felt very conflicted because you know this, this is the prize. But what no one else in this room knows is that three nights ago, I went and saw a documentary in which a woman suffering from a really horrible illness cries while riding a horse and then hug the horse afterwards. What they also don't know is the two places I can comfortably cry are in movie theaters and on airplanes. And I cried that night when I saw this woman being comforted by that horse. So I've seen too much to say that a horse is the worst animal. I'm so sorry you did a great job, but you guys, the prosecution, Here's your prize. Um, you can do like visitation like that. For that. Um, we can like monthly visitations. Yeah, yeah, I went on a big journey for that. Um, and Helen, once again, great job. You put it all out there. Thank you so much. <laughs> so thank you again to Helen Flourish for putting it all out there and making this argument. Thank you to Tommy Cook, Greg Edwards, Riley Anspaugh, I'm Michael Burns. We will see you back on the next Hot Take. <laughs>